The environmental variable settings for the package configurations are fairly easy to set up. Um, you know, the only thing that you really have to worry about when you're working with environment variables is, are they there? <laughs> I mean, that's really all you have to worry about. Now, first off, let me show you how, let me show you one technique for creating your own environment variables. So if you go to your My Computer and go to your Properties, and you go to the advanced system settings. Now this is what it looks like in Windows 2008 and Vista. Uh, it'll maybe look a little bit different in Windows 2003. But if you'll go to your advanced system settings here, go to the advanced tab, you know, there it is, right there, the environment variables button. We click it. And user variables for administrator. Okay, so this is where you can kind of mess up if or not mess up it depends on I suppose the application so these variables here available only for the administrator so if you go creating your environmental variables up here you know what that's actually fairly secure because if another user later logs in they would not be able to see any sensitive data that you had stored in the environment variables if you come down here though and create system variables, these can be used by any user on the system. Okay, it doesn't matter whether they're logged in locally, logged in remotely via like remote desktop, they will be able to see these particular system variables. So I would really caution you against putting you know secure information against inside the system variables. Like don't put your SA password. So I'm going to show you how to set these up here. Uh, I'm going to use just the user variables for the administrator. And let's see, let's call this um, 14, no, no. <laughs> let's call this um, file name. Okay, And so the variable value will be C colon um, package dot DTS config just so you can see. So, and actually I'm going to change that. So I'm going to say uh, SSIS config file name. That's what I want to make this now. Okay, so we're going to have, when I say okay, a new environmental variable. It's a user variable. You see it being listed up here. And it's pointing to a config file. You see, there's two ways to work with environment variables here in SSIS. You can use it as a pointer to a file, an XML configuration file. That's what I'm doing here. Or you can actually store the values. So I'm going to say OK. OK. And we can actually see this being set now. So if I go to the run prompt, go to the DOS prompt and type the word SET, set. Just to make sure we all see that here, just type in SET and hit enter then I get to see all of the variables and eventually we would be able to scroll down and see there is oops, back out of that sorry I moved the mouse there's my SSIS config file name okay we got that let's use that let's go now into SSIS go to the project make a new one Come on, extract. Uh, we'll create a new variable. We shall um, call this variable file name, and it will be a string data type. And, you know, we'll do kind of like what we did previously, set in variables window. And so now we want to have a script task that displays the values. You know, we've, you've done this several times. We'll use VB this time. Uh, so file name, and come down here, come on, extract. I rebooted since the last video, and it's slowing me down. Windows.forms.messagebox.show, yes.variables, named it file name, dot value, dot to string. Okay, nothing fancy, nothing new. I assume you know all about how to do that and I'm not using a package configuration yet I haven't assigned that just shows that the value of the variable is set in variables window cool 
Now, let's bring in package configurations. So you said that you wanted to use add and next, okay, an XML configuration variable uh, file whose configuration location is stored in an environment variable. Ah, okay. So click here, choose the environment variable. See, this is the list of all of the environment variables, and there's our guy right here. SSIS config file name. Okay, so we choose that, SSIS config file name. You say next, save it as whatever configuration. This is actually called an indirect XML configuration file, sort of a layer of abstraction, if you will, in between. So I say close, and do you notice that there's going to be any problems? Notice that, you know what, we kind of missed a step here. It says, let's kind of move all of this up here. Oops, I went too far and now I can't get it back. Um, look right here. The package, read this top line right here. I have to zoom in and out. The package is attempting to configure from the XML file. See package.dss config. Uh oh, the package path, failure. Reference an object that cannot be found. Failure importing configuration file. Okay, so it could not actually load that file. It read from our environment variable, but we never created that file, did we? So let me give you a little pointer for creating this file. Here's what you do. It's a workaround. It's a hack. You could go create it by hand, but that's a bad idea. What you want to do is fake it out. You want to go create a XML configuration file with the same name that you actually wanted to use in your environment variables. So package.dts config. I think that was from a previous, the last video maybe. And I'm going to overwrite it. And now I'm going to choose that for my variable file name, I want to change the value property. Now, this is not what I want. You see, that's a direct configuration, not an indirect. This is my XML file. Well, I can now remove that because all I really did was use that to create the XML configuration file that our environment variable SSIS config file name will use. And I can now say close. And I can now go edit that file we just created. and control K, control D to format it and change it from set in variables window to set in XML configuration file. Okay. And so now when our package runs, you can see it was successful in loading up that XML configuration file. Okay. Awesome. That's one way. There are two ways, my friend, to use environment variables. Okay, so this second part here is a bit tricky. So here's what we want to do. Um, go back to my package configurations, and I'm going to say take out the indirect one and add in an environment variable. Okay, well, the screen's going to change, and now I choose my environment variable. Okay, well, uh, let's do this. I'm going to go create a new one. And uh, let's call it um, my variable, SSIS my variable. Very exciting. And the value is set in environment variable. Now, Notice that this value is a scalar value. It's a single value. There's your indication that when you choose an environment variable as your setting, you are only able to change a single property at a time. So I say OK. It's called SSIS my variable. Just remember that. OK. Come over here. Um, is it here? Is it here? No, no, it hasn't. 
read that. Notice it's not in the list. So you could type it in, SSIS, my variable. Make sure you spell it correctly. Say OK, say next. Now the next screen is which property do you want to change? Well, we want the file name variables value property. So when I choose this, and see if I can make it, what's going to happen is whatever the value for our environment variable, SSIS my variable is, that's what is going to be placed into the value of the file name variable. Next. Finish. Okay, ready? Execute. Whoa. Set an XML configuration file. Wait, whoa, 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 I don't like this. Uh-oh. The configuration environment variable was not found. Maybe we typed it in wrong. Uh, let's see. I know that I didn't. I know what the problem is. I'm not telling you yet. We typed it in as SSIS my variable. And in fact, that's actually the name if we take a look at the environment variables. It is what we put in there, SSIS my variable. Here's the problem. The problem is, is that the Visual Studio environment reads those environment variables on launch. It does not read them again on package open or create package or anything else. So when we're in here in the debugger, it is executing this from the list of environment variables that existed at launch of Visual Studio. Well, we created a variable already. So here's the solution. Just close it. Open Visual Studio back up. Open your project again. And you'll be able to execute it. That's really it. So that's it. All I have to do now is just simply do that. It's just a little bitty, I don't know if it's a bug, a feature, it's, you know, a way it's supposed to be. I know that it's, I've got to create a workaround for it. And so I know how to do it. So that's really it. You can, in these environment variables, you can set a single properties value. You can use either user variables or system variables. I would just close by cautioning you not to store sensitive information in your system variables.